again, welcome back. Um, last week I talked about my trip to Europe and I'll have another video about you know, the next couple of days that I spent in Europe um, coming soon. Although I thought I might break it up a bit with this video about um, shooting with my Leica Q2 and the Leica M4P in tandem, um, one after the other, direct A and B, um, and sort of how they work together or how they differ and the experience of shooting with two different but similar Leica systems. We'll just start with a brief overview of um, each camera. Um, one is a 35 millimeter uh, analog film camera and the other one is a fully digital um, brand new camera released in 2019. As the M4P was released in the 1980s, it's a fully mechanical, um, no batteries, no frills uh, analog camera. Manual focus, aperture and shutter uh, entirely mechanical and lastly it has a top shutter speed of 1000 which is kind of important and the reason I bring up the top shutter speed of the M4P is because it's drastically different to the Q2. The Q2 has a mechanical shutter that goes up to 1 over 2000th of a second and it has an electronic shutter that goes up to 1 over 16,000th of a second so that's um, a full stop more than just about any other camera that I know about. Even the R5 only goes to one over 8,000. So you can shoot pretty much wide open all day long if you really want to. As you can see, the design of both these cameras is relatively consistent with the rest of Leica's cameras. Um, the size and weight is about the same. The, the shape of the body is pretty much exactly the same. The shutter dial is in the same position. The aperture ring on the front here is the same and you have manual aperture control there. You can adjust the aperture using um, shutter priority or um, digitally adjust the aperture. You can't do that here, but um, I like to use the aperture ring to keep them working consistently in tandem. And then also we have the eyepiece in the exact same position. So there's no, no confusion, which is something that I would um, confuse when I was using a Sony or an R5 and shooting a wedding and using this for their film photos. I would kind of be confused when I would put this up to my face and the eyepiece is in the middle, but this is on the left. And I really like the position on the left because it feels a lot more comfortable and you're not squishing your nose nearly as much. And to keep them even more consistent when I'm shooting, I have the uh, 28mm on the M4 as well as the 28 on the Leica Q2, which I can't change anyway other than cropping. The Q2 has a fixed 28mm focal length um, with an option to crop in camera. So there's a little button you press and it'll crop in just a little bit for you. It'll give you the frame lines for a 35, a 50 or a 75 mil lens. I think what I did not anticipate, especially coming from something like a Sony or an R5, is the battery life is um, <laughs> subpar, we'll say. Um, especially coming from something like a Sony or an R5, uh, I think I looked it up and it has, I think the official rating for the battery life that comes with the Q2 is about 350 images, which is not very many. So I will be needing to pick up a second battery for it. It wasn't too much of an issue while I was traveling overseas um, because it's not like I'm shooting a wedding or anything. And I'm not taking a thousand images in a few hours, but more just one or two here or there um, as I go throughout the day. Something I wasn't surprised by was the fluidity and interchangeability um, of using both cameras at once. Um, by that I mean it was super easy to go from one to the other as a byproduct of Leica's um, very intentional and simple design throughout the years. What I find impressive is that the M4 is a camera from that 1980s and the Q2 came out in 2019, so just a couple of years ago, and they feel very similar. I've done a similar kind of A and B using something like an R5 and a 5D Mark IV, and there's a world of difference. But contrary to that, when I was using the Q2 and the M4 together, if it wasn't for the AVF, I might have accident, ooh, accidentally, hmm, Mr. Bond. However, if it wasn't for the EVF on the Q2, I might have actually confused it for the M4 at times. The way I would shoot is pretty normal. The exception being I would turn the LCD on the back of the Q2 off and just use the EVF. And so I would just be using the rangefinder up to my eye 
Um, I did this to save battery life. This became especially important when the airport misplaced my checked baggage and my charges for my phone and camera were both in there. So I was without being able to <laughs> charge my things for a couple of days. So conserving battery life um, became pretty important for those couple of days. With that in mind, turning the LCD off made it even more fluid to change between the M4 and the Q2 because there wasn't a digital screen on the back of either of them. One of the greatest advantages I found when shooting with the Q2 over the M4 was the aperture priority mode. Uh, having a camera that automatically meters for you is certainly something I've missed while shooting straight. It felt a lot more freeing. I know there are some film cameras that have an, an AE mode like I used to have, or I probably still have it somewhere, but an old Canon EOS something or other that had an aperture priority mode. Uh, when I shoot street with the M4, my strategy is one of just metering the scene and then staying there in that lighting situation for a few minutes and then adjusting when I move around. With the aperture priority mode, I felt a lot more mobile and I felt like I could move around the cities a bit more. When I was over in Europe, I felt like I could walk around and turn a corner into a different lighting situation and um, feel a lot less worried about the lighting situation being drastically different to where I just was. The difference in turning a corner can be from shooting wide open at 2.8 to shooting at f11 in the sun. So. I found it really helpful to have aperture priority mode. This is all to say that shooting film and digital are completely different experiences, but it's more a comment that Leica has done an interesting job blending the two relatively seamlessly. Um, a more one-to-one -one comparison would be the M4 to the, the new M11, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. I think I just enjoy that Leica has kept the design of their M mount cameras more or less the same throughout the years and the Q-Type obviously borrows a lot from the M. Looking at the M2 all the way to the 11, the M11 or the MP, there's not a whole lot of difference in terms of design. And I really like that you can pick up a camera from the 30s or the 50s and a camera from today and have a fairly similar experience. So if you've been shooting them for a while, you know what you're getting when you get a new M camera. A connection to history seems a bit pretentious, but we are talking about Leica cameras here. The film experience is super commonly referred to as a slowed down experience. And while I agree that is true, there's something to be said for speed and being able to pivot super quickly. I like that I can turn around fast with the Q2 and it will automatically adjust my exposures. If the light changes drastically and one over 1,000th isn't fast enough, I might need to push the aperture as well. And by the time I've done both of those things, I might have missed a shot. So that's a little bit of a drawback for me. I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm just saying that shooting film has some limitations that digital definitely throws out the window. Those limitations can be freeing as well. Limitations make you more decisive and intentional, but digital makes you a bit more flexible. For example, this is one of my favorite images from Florence, and I wouldn't have been able to get it if I didn't have the ability to bracket my exposure and shoot two frames consecutively without advancing the film lever because the image right before it was trash. On film, I would have only got that first one and it would have been a bit of a bummer. In any case, I feel like the Leica digital experience is a lot more fluid and seamless in that sense. I love that the only thing between me and taking a picture is whether the camera is switched on or not. With the M4, there's a little bit more to consider. I had a couple of instances where I had someone walking by that I wanted to get a picture of, but I'd forgotten to advance the film lever or my shutter was gonna to be too fast or I couldn't pull focus quick enough. And these are all user error things. I'm just saying that the digital experience is a lot more idiot proof. And as an idiot myself, I like that. So yeah, that's that's all for this video. I just thought I would share my thoughts on um, what it's like to shoot with a Leica digital and a Leica film camera in tandem. I do really like that they're more or less the same and that there is enough vocabulary between the two that you can switch rather seamlessly. So that's gonna be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a different experience or you share the same experience as what I've had using two different Leica cameras, I would love to hear about it in the comments and please subscribe if you'd like to. If not, I won't be offended. All right, bye.